Hi, my name's Tristan Gooley, also known as The Natural Navigator. And in this webinar for the Royal Institute of Navigation, I'd like to talk about uh, natural navigation, of course, but I'd like to draw your attention to what I think is a very exciting aspect of natural navigation. And it's one of the, the least well explored areas, but it's one of the most um, intellectually challenging, but also fun uh, areas and that's map making using nature. But first, for the few people um, who've taken an interest in natural navigation over recent years, and and I've been trying my hardest over over the years to to, to get those numbers up, but it is still realistically uh, a minority, uh, a minority who I like to believe are having a bit more of an interesting time outdoors than many. But for those people, I think the way in and the most common way of thinking of natural navigation is. Um, how nature offers compasses for us. So just to give you a few examples, nearby me here in my local woods in, in West Sussex in the South Downs. Um, it's a, a mainly beech woodland. I've got a, a beech tree here. And as we look up at the branches, what we'll find in every single tree is an asymmetry. We find more branches on the south side typically and the shape of the branches is different. The branches on the south side closer to horizontal, the branches on the north side closer to vertical. And that is just reflecting back to us uh, what I like to think of as the sun's footprints. So the sun and the wind are leaving footprints everywhere and we can use those to make compasses. Um, on this tree also, let's go in and have a little bit of look. If we have a look on the, uh, the south side here, we can see in among sun flecks, we can see some, some good splotches of, of bright lichens whereas if we go round and I'll have to step carefully because beech trees like to drop their branches so there's quite a lot on the ground here but a very different look to the north side of the tree uh, with the ivy growing up it here and there are literally thousands of techniques like that I've, I've written about um, uh, over a thousand of them in, in my books and a lot of my work is is effectively collecting these techniques and then filtering them to the ones that have practical value or sometimes just interest because getting people into the subject is, is giving people tools that they can find and enjoy even if they're not the sort of things that we're going to use on um, a, a practical expedition. But what I'd like to do is, is just sort of introduce you um, to the, the concept of map making. Many of you will be familiar with this but I do think it is a it's a largely untapped area even within natural navigation so if we take this tree here the wild cherry there's actually a line of the three of them behind me and we can use the shape of them they're all they're all giving trees each individual tree will give you over 20 clues of how to find direction and they are all doing that but the species is also trying to make a map every single organism is is specializing it has a niche and map making and natural navigation is really about taking much, you know, better known and established disciplines like studies of ecology and habitat and turning them on their heads. So trees like wild cherries don't thrive in the heart of woodland. They thrive at the edges um, and quite often they're planted as well. So there's a, there's a human element to that on top of this. So that's just the start of, of trees making maps. We can use trees and all small plants will tell us about the proximity of water. Every single tree has a relationship with water. So some like alders and willows will tell us that there's water very nearby. Um, the beaches near me thrive in soil that isn't waterlogged so they're much more common on dry um, or at least well draining soil like we have here in the, the chalky south downs. <clears throat> but this this applies to every single organism we see, every single plant and animal, and I do mean every single one, is part of our map. So instead of approaching this with the idea which, which plants or animals are telling me uh, are adding a layer to my map, instead of that I would say every single thing we see we try and make a map out of. So I've just walked into a clearing here and I can feel my, my legs getting scratched by brambles. Now those two things are connected. Brambles need certain levels of light, they're much, we get those levels of light in clearings or of course at the edges of paths. You can also use uh, brambles or certainly the blackberries as a compass, the, um, the, the fruit is sweeter in the, the south facing spots. Um, but every, every single plant around me, um, 
I'm looking down and seeing uh, patches of, of clover telling me that this is a well-trodden area. So what a lot of uh, naturalists will do is they will take the science and come at it from one angle. And in natural navigation, we take the same science and come at a different angle. What do I mean by that? Well, if we know that a certain, certain organism thrives within a niche, in the niche that it has evolved to, to survive within, then if we want to find it, we go and we go and identify that niche. But in natural navigation and map making, we, we learn what each organism needs. And then when we see it, it's telling us what niche we're in. So let me just try and find uh, a nice example here. I'm walking past uh, a lot of dogs mercury telling me that there's a shade on my right. Um, again, a few more brambles on my left telling me that there's much more sunlight there. And then down on the ground, uh, I've just walked past um, some pineapple weed telling me it's an area of heavy footfall, um, telling me that there's, there's been a lot of people or animals going this way. I'm on a well-trodden path, so I knew that. That's quite often the case with natural navigation map making. It, it's, it's reinforcing what we know, and that's true of, of every map. And like every map, we can choose the layers we're most interested in. We can use, I've got birds um, singing all around me, all the, the usual suspects. Um, and they, they're telling me what's going on and their habitat is, is giving me information about the local area as well. They're also telling me I'm on my own because the general sound of song is telling me that there are no, no other people or animals, um, certainly no cats, um, probably no dogs either in the area. And these are all layers. So what I'd encourage you to do um, is next time you're outdoors, doesn't matter if you're in the, the heart of a city or um, uh, in a slightly wilder spot, just pick something entirely at random and and say what is that adding to my lap what is the to, what is that adding to my map what is the layer it is it is giving me uh, and you'll you'll hopefully find that that adds a, an exciting and intriguing new layer to your navigating thank you very much for joining me